So again, we have a pretty much perfect weather in Florida for today's liftoff attempt. This is a rideshare mission carrying 48 Starlink satellites as well as two Black Sky satellites enclosed in the fairing that you see on screen right now. And there goes those hissing and popping. That is normal and expected at this stage in the countdown. At this point, the propellant has been fully loaded on the vehicle, and we are just under a minute away. Uh, both stages should be beginning to pressurize for liftoff. So we are 40 seconds away. Let's listen in to terminal count as we prepare for liftoff of the 48 Starlink satellites and the two Black Sky satellites. T minus 30 seconds and counting. That's 15 seconds of counting. T minus five, four, three, two, one, zero, ignition, lift off. Nominal power in telemetry. So we are about a minute into liftoff. Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. In just a few seconds here, we are expecting the call out for max Q. That is the period where the vehicle will experience the highest amount of aerodynamic pressures. Max Q. And there was the call out. So now that we've gone uh, past the period of high stresses on the vehicle, we have three events happening in quick succession in about a minute. First, we have uh, main engine cutoff, also referred to as MECO. Uh, then stage separation, followed by second engine start one, also known as SES one. Main engine cutoff is where all nine Merlin engines on the first stage will shut down to slow the vehicle down in preparation for stage separation. During stage separation, the first and second stage will separate from one another. The first stage will make its way back to Earth for landing, while the second stage continues its journey with our satellites uh, with the third event, which is uh, second engine start one. The single Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage will then ignite and continue to propel those um, Starlink satellites and Black Sky satellites into orbit. Stage separation confirmed. So you can see on screen we had successful main engine cutoff, uh, followed by stage separation, and on the right hand side of the screen, that is the single Merlin vacuum engine going red hot 
Uh, on the left hand side of the screen is a view of our first stage. Uh, I think we're getting some views of the of twilight right now as the sun has just set uh, in the east coast. In a few seconds, we are expecting fairing deploy and that will expose the satellites to the vacuum of space. Fairing separation confirmed. We got the audio and video confirmation on the right-hand side of your screen. Uh, the fairing halves have deployed. We are going to attempt to recover those uh, using our recovery vessel, Bob, later on in the mission. Uh, for now, the uh, mission is going great. Uh, again, uh, the left-hand side is a view from the top of our first stage looking downward. Um, you can see little plumes of gas coming out. That is nitrogen uh, for our, uh, as part of our attitude control system to help orient the, the first stage booster properly as it makes its way back to attempt its ninth landing on our drone ship in the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, right hand side is a view of the second stage Merlin vacuum engine, the uh, 48 Starlink satellites and the two Black Sky satellites that we had mentioned earlier. They are signal, on the Bermuda. opposite end of that engine. And so again, they are um, going to be um, in this burn for another couple of minutes um, as they continue to make their way to low Earth orbit. So in order to make its way back to the uh, drone ship, the first stage needs to execute two burns. Uh, the first is an entry burn where three of the Merlin 1D engines uh, will ignite. Uh, this helps to slow the stage down as it re-enters the upper parts of the Earth's atmosphere. The second burn is the landing burn. This is a single engine burn, and this will bring the vehicle speed down rapidly in order to land on our drone ship. Trajectory nominal. That first burn, the entry burn, is expected to start around T plus 6 minutes and 22 seconds and last for about 20 seconds. For those that are just joining us, we are in the middle of SpaceX's 27th mission of 2021. Both stages have separated. We did have a successful liftoff from Space Launch Complex 40. Things are continuing to go well for tonight's mission. So we are about 20 seconds away from the beginning of that entry burn on the first stage. Uh, we do have camera views right now. It is a little dark, but as soon as that entry burn starts, we should see that first stage um, being lit up as it will slow itself down before hitting the denser parts of the Earth's atmosphere. Stage one, entry burn start up. On flight termination system is saved. All right, three engines have relit on the first stage. If you're keeping track, at the bottom left-hand side of the screen, there is a um, speedometer of sorts. That is tracking the velocity of the first stage. You can see that we're starting to reduce that stage velocity. One, burn, shut down. If you keep an eye on that, as soon as the first stage hits the denser parts of the atmosphere, we'll continue to slow down um, its speed in preparation for the next burn, the landing burn. And that landing burn is... Uh, expected to happen a few seconds after the T plus eight minute mark. Trajectory nominal. The MVAC engine performance on the second stage continues to go well. A few seconds after we complete the landing burn, uh, we are expecting to turn off this engine and enter a coast phase. And as a reminder, we will be reigniting this engine about 50 minutes from now. Um,
And as we continue to orbit around the Earth, we uh, are trying to connect to ground stations here on the floor. And so we'll periodically lose some signals, but um, you can see that uh, we're, we're trying to get the signals back and the video footage back um, as much as possible as we uh, hopefully can see the Black Sky satellites deploying from the top of the second stage. Global 12, payload deploy confirmed. So we did get audio confirmation. I am looking on screen right now to see if we can see it visually. Uh, again, the two Black Sky satellites are actually positioned at the top of the stack. And so the, the um, objects, if you will, that are closest to the screen, those are the Starlink satellites. So uh, we didn't quite get the visual confirmation of the first satellite. Maybe we'll get the second one. Um, but again, we are about three minutes away from the second deployment of the Black Sky satellite. That one interesting thing to note as we continue to get this view here is uh, in space and, and maybe without a point of reference, things seem to look very, very stagnant. Um, if you look at the bottom right hand side of the screen, we are actually traveling at 26,000 kilometers an hour uh, around the Earth. And this is really to, um, this is close to orbital velocity, but at those speeds, you could pretty much travel uh, end to end from America in about 10 minutes. So uh, even though it doesn't look like we're moving very, very quickly, the second stage and the satellites are indeed zipping around the Earth. So right now, the second stage is actually uh, just a little bit south and east of Australia. It's continuing to head east. And we are about a minute away from the second Black Sky satellite deployment. For those that are just joining, we did have successful deployment of our first Black Sky satellite. This is the fourth rideshare mission of 2021 uh, for us here at SpaceX and the 27th mission overall. Just about 15 seconds away from our expected deployment of the second and final Black Sky satellite. Global 13, payload deploy confirmed. And that is great news. We've now successfully deployed the two Black Sky satellites on behalf of our customer spaceflight. We are wishing them bon voyage to the two Black Sky sats. And it was our pleasure to give you a lift today. With that, we are awaiting the deployment of our 48 Starlink satellites, which is scheduled to occur about 20 minutes from now. At the time of the, the, of the deployment, we won't actually have ground station coverage, but we'll return just before we acquire a signal to the South Texas station uh, about T plus one hour and 32 minutes to get confirmation of that deployment. We will see you back here in just a few moments. we successfully deployed the two Black Sky satellites. Uh, we were expecting the Starlink satellites to deploy around the T plus one hour and 29 minute mark. And at that time, we didn't have ground station coverage. So right now we should be coming um, 
in the range of South Texas Ground Station um, and uh, getting confirmation of the Starlink satellites deploying. So I am hearing that we did indeed get confirmation of those 48 Starlink satellites deploying. Um, that is the 34th launch of Starlink to date, which means that we've launched nearly 2,000 Starlink satellites thus far. With that said, all of the payloads on today's, missions, uh, on today's mission have reached their intended orbit. Uh, for now, we will be bringing our webcast to an end. Uh, would like to thank the Range and Federal Aviation Administration for supporting today's mission and to our customer Spaceflight. And of course, thank you to all of our viewers and all of our Starlink customers using our service at this time. If you are interested in signing up for Starlink service, head over to Starlink.com. Thank you again for watching and we will see you next time.